In this video, I want to talk about how we can think about probabilities of continuous random variables when the probability is a function of more than one random variable. And the example which I'm going to give here is the case of having two random variables. So the example which I'm going to give here is we're going to suppose that our probability density function, which I'm going to call f, is a function of the height of an individual, so it's the density of, of a probability across that particular random variable, and there's also a sort of dependence on the weight of an individual. So this now represents a PDF, but this PDF, unlike the 1D case, is actually a PDF which is defined over two of the random variables. So how can I think about probability in this particular setup? Well, the way to think about it is to imagine that we've got two axes, one which represents the height of an individual and another which represents the weight of an individual. And then we have a third axis, which is now perpendicular to the other two, which measures the PDF. And we might imagine that a possible shape, if we imagine that both height and weight are relatively Gaussian, we might imagine that the sort of shape which is sort of traced out here across these two random variables might look something like sort of a sort of cone shape perhaps across these two particular random variables. So I'm sort of doing my best now to sort of draw this in 3D. You can sort of imagine this. If you looked down on this from above, it would look something like perhaps you would have, if I was drawing contours, something like this from the sort of center. If you're looking at down at it from the top here. So this is now our PDF, and now we can sort of see that we can visualize this as a kind of volume which is traced out in three dimensions. Obviously, if we were dealing with PDFs which are a function of more than two random variables, we would then run out of spatial dimensions so we can no longer draw it, but it would basically be the analog of this but in higher dimensional space. Okay, so in this particular framework, how do we go about working out a probability, and, and what actually is a probability in this particular framework? Well, we know for the discrete case that if we're talking about the case of two random variables and we say we've got two random variables x and y, then we know that the sum over all potential values which our random variable x can take on and all potential values which our random variable y can take on, we know that this must sum to 1. So what's the analogue now that we're talking about continuous probabilities? Well, it's basically just the continuous analog of a sum, which is an integral. So here we know that the integral, or in fact it's going to be a double integral, over all potential values which height can take on, well, height can't be negative, so it starts at zero and goes up all the way to infinity, and all values that weight can take on, so that's from zero all the way up to positive infinity, of the probability density function, which is this function f, so f is a function that h takes on that particular value and w takes on that particular value. If I integrate that across both weight and height, this integral should now be 1. So you can ask the question, well, what, what actually is, well, how do we find out a probability given this sort of diagram which I've drawn over here to the left? Well, it's quite easy to see by virtue of the fact that we're actually doing a double integral the probability is represented by the volume of this particular shape. And by virtue of the fact that we're talking about a probability, the volume of this shape has to be one, because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be a probability. Okay, so how do we then go ahead and use this sort of knowledge that a volume represents a probability to help us to work out the probability, say, that an individual's height is less than or equal to some certain value, and an individual's weight is less than or equal to some certain value. Well, it's quite simple really. All we need to do is we just need to do an integral over all the sort of values of height which are allowed. So we integrate from zero to the height h1, and then we integrate from zero to the weight w1, and we integrate our function f across both weight and height. And I've sort of neglected to put the arguments in here just because um, of space. Okay, so that's how we do it mathematically, but how would we actually find that out if we sort of had this shape here on the left? Well, all we would do is we would go up to our certain level of height, which we were interested in, call it h1, then we'd sort of trace over to the shape, imagine going across there, and we'd go up to the certain weight which we we're interested in, w1, and we'd go up all the way to there, and then we can imagine that what this would then form is, is 
if we integrated across this, we would be working out the area of this particular sort of tent shape thing, which I'm sort of trying to indicate here on the left. So it would be the air, sorry, the volume rather, underneath this particular tent thing would be the probability which we were interested in.